Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements Lens Flare video, I'll show you the right way to put a lens flare on your picture, get it exactly where you want, and also still be able to control the lens flare once it's on your image. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and, of course, share. You can also support my channel through Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe as well. I do several videos every single week. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start off this Photoshop Elements Lens Flare video by using our just basic background picture here. Now there's already a lens flare. You can kind of see it happening here, a little bit of discoloration down there. So there's already a lens flare on this image, but it's pretty hard to see. The image is basically underexposed by just a little bit. The problem, of course, is that sun. Now, to make the image more dramatic, we can put a lens flare right up here. Now, the straightforward way is just to go up here to Filter, come down to Render, and Lens Flare right there. You get a thumbnail of your image in here, and you can then place that exactly where you want. See, here's our lens flare all over the page there. I'll put it right on the sun, pretty much. And we can then adjust the brightness in here to get just the effect that we want. I think somewhere around in here looks pretty good, about 125, I guess I'll call it, like that. And of course, we can try out the different lens flare types as well. We'll stick with the top one here, the 50 to 300 zoom. If you click OK, you may or may not have gotten that in the right spot exactly, and you may or may not like that brightness. But you can't do anything about that because it placed that flare right on the background image, so you're stuck with that. Okay, let me show you how you can solve those problems. Let's just undo this lens flare. There we go. The first thing is that you can put your lens flare on a new layer. Let's just make a new layer up here. If you fill that layer with black, there we are, you can then place a lens flare on here, and then if you use the screen mode, it will still look the same. You can see your background through it. It screens out the dark part, and you can then move it around if you want to. But there's some problems with that as well. Let me show you the biggest problem up here. Filter, Render, and Lens Flare. And here's the biggest problem right there. You only see that current layer in the Lens Flare tool. You can no longer see your background picture, so you can no longer find your exact spot for that. So there's our, our two problems. Let's see how we can solve that. The first one is we need to locate where that sun is. I'm just going to zoom in a bit on this, grab the zoom tool, and let's zoom in nice and tight on the sun. That's pretty good. We'll place a couple of guidelines in here, a vertical guideline and a horizontal guideline giving us that center point. To do this, you'll need to have your rulers showing. So go up here to view and come down, make sure that rulers is checked. So have your rulers. You can then grab the ruler and pull out on that, and it gives you a guideline. Let's now position that at about the center point. Looks like right about there. This is just a visual, but you can get pretty accurate here. Okay, there's my center horizontal. Let's go ahead and pull in from the left-hand side, and let's do the center vertical. I think that looks right there. Looks pretty good. Okay, there's our center of that sun. Now, I need to know what that center point is. We can then use that as a reference. First off, Notice as I roll over my pointer here changes and it's not really what I want. So let's go up to view and come down here where it says lock guides. Click on that and you no longer get that guide icon showing. So okay, we now have our nice little arrow pointer. We have our guides in position. Last thing to do, go up to window, come down to info right here. And notice as I roll this around right down here on the info box, make sure this is set at pixels. And watch that X and that Y. As I move it around, I get the X and Y position of my mouse. And it's right at that point, right at the tip of that arrow. So let's go right up here and right there. That's the center point. And that's 315. And maybe down just a touch. I'm thinking about 315, 370. Looks like it's probably exactly on that center point right around there. Okay, so we'll, we'll call it 315, 370. So there's our center point. We have that information now. Now that we have that, and we have our black layer made up here, we actually can hide the guidelines at this point. We don't need those any longer. I'll just go ahead and uncheck view guys. There it is. And let's zoom this back out to fit screen. 
Okay, so we have three things now. Our background picture, we have our black layer above that, and we have those numbers that we just found using the guidelines. Let's now go back up here to our filter, come down to render, and back to lens flare. Again, we're just seeing that black in there, and notice that there's no way in here to put in those numbers, but there is a trick to that. If you hold the Alt key down, this is the main trick here, hold the Alt key down, click on the thumbnail, and it gives you an additional little pop-up window right there. There we go. We can now just type in our numbers. There we go. 1315, and I decided that 370 looked like it was just about exactly right. 370, choose OK. It then repositions that at exactly that point that we found by using those guidelines. Again, just hold the Alt key down and click on the thumbnail, and it gives you this precise flare center dialog box. Notice though this is in pixels and I mentioned to set the info box to pixels. That's the reason why right there. Okay, once that's done, choose OK. It applies that lens flare onto the black layer. We can now go up here to our blend modes, come down to screen, and it then applies that. It hides all the dark parts and just shows the bright parts of our lens flare on our picture right there exactly centered on our sun. Now that it's on its own layer, we can show or hide that layer like that. And we can change the opacity over here and get just the right amount of lens flare. So it gives you that ability to use the opacity for fine tuning this because we have it on its own layer. You also can apply adjustment layers if you want to for even more control and adjustment. So there you go. That's the best way to put a lens flare on a picture so you can get it exactly where you want it on your image and still have even more control over that because it's on its own layer. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and of course share. It really helps out my channel if you click on both those buttons every single time you watch a video. Don't forget to subscribe and also take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements and I have different courses for different versions of Photoshop Elements and there's a link for that right down there in the description.